Hey there. So, do you notice anything different? I do have a new game set up, but what else is different? You may be thinking that the map might be a little different. And if so, you're correct. We are going to give it a go. Allied Solo. Here we go. Take one. Okay, so um, uh, reading the rules as usual, falling asleep while reading the rules as usual. I just cannot read a rule that thick, rule book that thick, and really give a damn after a while. I mean, I'm just skipping sections like, okay, fine, fine. And of course, that's um, what burns me. And uh, I've learned my lesson with this game. And so I have to take it really slow. And I'm going to make sure this thing is my Bible from the start uh, while we learn the rules. Um, but here's some good news. The good news is, is I've already done this before. And just like the Iwo Jima and the D-Day games, um, there's a lot of uh, similar things. Like, for example, Advance After Combat is exactly the same. Now, um, you know, with the two hex rule, two hex advance rule, there's a lot of stuff that's exactly the same. Proximate is exactly the same. Uh, danger of surround is exactly the same. So there's a lot of concepts that we've already taken the time to learn that I don't have to relearn again, okay? So that part's good. Um, the next thing is, is for setup, what you do is you set this, I, well, okay, let me back up. I am not going to give instruction as if this was your first time ever playing. If this is your first time ever playing, go to the German one. Uh, this is assuming that you've already played the German one or you've already watched my German series. And we're just going to continue off of that. And I'm only going to talk about things that are different from the German one. And I know that might frustrate some of you who want to just jump into this one first. Um, but it's too much work. I mean, I'd have to spend hours and hours of video just covering stuff that really has already been covered. Um, I still think that I'm long-winded. I mean, most of my viewers will tell me that. And, um, and so uh, you probably will glean what you need to glean, even if this is the only series you watch. But uh, anyways, uh, here we go. And I promise uh, we have to take this slow. Uh, so there will be a lot of rules lookups and things like that. Also, um, you may have noticed that I did move my table down. We were playing on that board over there. Now we moved over to this one. And I had this feature with my table I hardly ever use, but I thought it would be a good idea. Um, I have this little plug in here that it's meant for a player to be sitting at that chair and this chart would be facing him instead of us. But it works great the other way around. So there's our terrain chart uh, right there so we can just easily reference it. And if I could print out the, uh, the calendar, I would do that as well, but I'm, I'm a little lazy and I haven't done that yet. Um, Okay, so let's get started. Uh, you set things up the way you would before, where you read the, um, uh, you know, for example, this tile. It says, see how it says 2205? Well, he goes on 2205. So everybody lines up like they always would, okay? Now, in the first one, there was these exceptions. There was this guy with this asterisk that needed to go into the reserve units. There was another guy who I think uh, was in the reserve, but was supposed to be on the board. Um, I'm not aware of any of that. We'll go through it step by step to make sure that I didn't miss that. Um, but uh, the interesting twist on this game is that the allies are gonna do their, or I'm sorry, the Germans are gonna do their first impulse through a series of cards. And I just realized that they're out of my reach. So let me go grab those. Okay, so um, from everything I read, the Allied Action Deck is not used in this game, of course, because we're the ones controlling the Allies, but um, we're going to be using these German setup cards in just a second. And so what's going to happen is we're going to play these cards, 
And actually, I'll start shuffling them while I'm talking. We're going to play these cards, and then they're going to depict what the Germans did to us during the surprise attack. And these cards are very random, and the order you draw them matters. So, for example, I might draw... What is this? This is the uh, uh, 47th core, right? I might draw a card for the 47th core, but then there's an ABC card. And if you draw the C card first, and then the B, and then the A, that's a different outcome than if you draw the A, and then the B, and then the C, and then all the other permutations in between. It's a pretty nifty little concept. I've never seen anything like this before um, in any game I've played, and I actually am quite impressed by it. Now, what... Um, what this is going to emulate is the surprise attack. And the game is going to start on our turn. Because just like in the uh, German solo game, the Germans go first and then we go. And when the German uh, command cards run out, um, that's when the round ends, or the day ends. And then we begin, right? So even if we have cards in our hand, we don't get to play them. We do get to go last, of course, but we don't get to uh, finish any cards that were in our deck if the Germans finish before we do. Okay, now with that being said, um, the way victory points work is we're preventing them from scoring victory points. So it's still the Germans are the ones that need to score. We win by attrition, basically. Um, the other thing with this is, like I said, the these cards are gonna determine how their first impulses went. And then we're gonna pick up, uh, so like, I think it's the equivalent of our first impulse after they've already finished their first impulse. I think that's where this is going to start. So they're going to do some punches to us, and there's nothing we can do. These cards dictate what happens. And so that's going to change the, the landscape here. And then what we're going to do is build our deck and, and then react to it from there. So um, we do have some December 16th special rules, just like in the other game. Uh, you'll find that they're a lot less uh, of an issue for us. Uh, I know like one of them is we can't play artillery. I don't think we can do air power. Um, uh, we can't destroy bridges. It's almost identical to the German game, in fact. And so you're going to find a lot of comfort in the solo allied game. Uh, if you understand the, the German one, some of these things aren't going to surprise you at all. Um, now, uh, I, um, I'm doing this for the first time. And so we're going to experience it together. Uh, there is this concept called a German draw pile. So the German command cards will go there. And I have, for example, all the December 16th supplemental cards separate from the December 16th primary. And I'm pretty sure I'm supposed to mix them together, but I haven't done that yet. I'm waiting for the instructions to tell me to. And then, of course, I have the extra cards after December 16th here. And then I did the same thing with the Allies. I got the December 16th stuff out, and I separated out all the non-December 16th stuff. And um, this, um, from cursory reading, the Allies, uh, the deck management is identical to the German one, where the primary cards are always going to be in your deck, and then the supplemental cards get shuffled in, and then it, whatever supplemental cards you get on December 16th, you won't get them again until December 18th at the earliest. You know, it's that kind of concept. So um, if you're familiar with the German game, you're absolutely familiar with how to set up your, your deck with the allies. So, um, but we'll go through that step by step as well. <clears throat> okay, so, um, so the concept here is, well, let's talk about other things you need. You need... You need the three yes tokens. You do not need the no tokens. And these are the fuel tokens, okay? You just need the three yes tokens. And I know for a fact from reading it that one of them is going to go here. And it doesn't matter if you put yes side up because, like I said, they're only going to be the yes tokens in the game. And then I think I get to pick where the other two go. I'll, I'll wait until we read that instruction again in the rule book. But that was the impression I got. And so uh, uh, the, the no tokens are out of the game. Sorry, my son was sign languaging me. Um, okay, everything else you're going to need. Um, I have 
a whole bunch of these. And to be quite honest, I'm gonna use, need to use them because I read the way the German activations work. And my oh gosh, it's, it's complicated. And it has to be because the Germans are on the attack. And so I fully understand and appreciate why it needs to be complicated. But when they move, there is 15 different move commands they can do. And you start like, you do like one to three. And then if none of those work, then you have to do two through nine. And then after that doesn't work, it's 11 through 12. And then there's a 14 and a 15. Um, and I could be off on a few of the numbers. Um, let me just say that every move command makes complete sense. Um, it's just overwhelming. I do not have it memorized. And so what I'm thinking I'm going to need to do is, for example, let's say that this 30th core or 80th core is going to activate. You have to go through each of these and figure out which ones are going to do the move command. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do is I'm going to have like a pile of these purples and we're just going to put them on at the start of the command. And then after I move them, so let's say this guy moves across the river. I know that's an illegal move, just trust me. Um, if he moves across the river, then I would take it off to show that he's already done his activation, but these other guys still have to do something. And so that's the new system I'm gonna try. And this is for when the Germans take their turn. I don't necessarily need it for when I take my turn, but when the Germans take their turn, it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be messy. That's the best thing I can say to you. Um, Please don't spill that. That's all I ask. <laughs> There's my son. He's saying hi. Um, okay, so uh, um, I don't know. This is probably enough for now, but uh, uh, we're going to grab some more as, as time goes on. And um, another thing that I can tell you that I read that was very interesting is that German reserves don't come out on the day that they are listed. So we still have all these reserves up here. So you can see there's a German reserve on December 16th and it's not out here. I got the reserves from my units, but not his. They only come out if the Model Army Group B card comes out. And so there's a very specific German card that comes out and it causes every reserve from today, retrospective backwards, to come out all at once. It's a really insane thing, but um, that's how it works. Um, the other thing that's interesting is that you're gonna, you're gonna draw two German cards. And so for example, if I were to draw a German primary card and a German non-primary card, then what happens is the primary card becomes the command card and this one becomes a support card. And so they each have a different function and they each do different things. And um, this one could trigger right away if it has an actual event written on it. This particular one does not. And um, this one is gonna be executed first. And if it is executed first, then this combat tactic will be used to support this. So that would mean that this card goes away as because it was used as a combat tactic. But if this card was not used, then what happens is this card, uh, this card obviously is done, and then they do another command with this card. So it is possible they'll do two commands on their impulse. It all depends on how it plays out and what's written on the cards, and um, it's actually quite, uh, it's another pretty ingenious system. Um, uh, there's a lot of really cool things in this one. Now, the what if you drew two primary cards? Well, then you look at the command value. So this one has a command value of three. This one has a command value of two. So the two would be the support card. The three would be the primary. So it's that kind of concept. Um, what's also interesting is for the allied deck, uh, we, don't use, um, we don't use command values at all. Um, so we play um, one card during our impulse and that's it. Now we can play other cards to add combat tactics. We can add, um, we can do, uh, uh, oh, there's also no reactions in this game. So the Germans had a reaction that if we destroyed a bridge, uh, the Germans could have reacted and said, nope, not gonna do it. Um, we don't have that. Um, there's no reactions and uh, there's something else that there isn't in this game as well, but I can't remember now. Um, but basically these uh, command values don't matter. 
So we don't have to play low command value cards first and, you know, to squeak out as many actions as we can. It doesn't work that way for the allies. So uh, that's another interesting uh, wrinkle in all this. So, um, so let's do the setup. And I'm going to follow the solo booklet. Um, the rules booklet is actually quite good. Um, it's just disjointed compared to this. So um, I'm going to try to do this one. And we are going to do the, the full campaign. We're not going to do any of the smaller scenarios. All right, so the first thing it's saying is to do initial placement, which I've already done for you. And then adjust the starting locations of all units via the procedures implemented on the German unit adjustment display and player aids. Um, it's interesting. This doesn't even get into the details of how to do that. Okay, so this is worthless. So let's put this away for now. It has other stuff we'll follow later, but um, okay, so I'm going to push these out and maybe zoom it out a little bit for now. Um, oh, I forgot to add the player aids. The um, terrain effects chart stays. Um, this comes out. This is just for setup. That's all we're going to use it for, and then it's never going to be used. In fact, you flip it over, and it's your, um, it's where we keep our deck and keep track of our discards and stuff. So um, that should look very familiar. It's just like the German game. And then there's this, which is also just for setup. I don't think there's this is used ever again. And uh, you can see that the opposite side of this was the German um, solo thing. Anyways, so we're going to use both of these. This one, after we're done, will just go out of the game. And then this one will flip over and we'll use that for our deck. Um, there are two new player aids. Brand new. I mean, we don't use the old one. There's a German system intelligence, which is just like the Allied system intelligence. And it's got some really cool concepts. It's got this objective marker concept. And um, you may recall, I said that we didn't get to use those in a German game. Um, but these, these right here, these things, those are objective markers. So the 5th, 6th, and 7th Panzer Army will have objectives that they're trying to do. But each individual core has its own objective as well. And uh, you roll the die to see who gets what. So it's random. So every time you play the game, it's going to be different, which I think is brilliant as well. I hate having a stagnant game. Um, if anything, the German game is quite stagnant. The only thing that's different is how your deck draws work, which, by the way, does change the game, um, the way the deck draws work. But um, it is stagnant in terms of how it starts. This game, however, is not. And you can see here that if I roll 1 to 6, the 6 Panzer Army will have an objective on Malmody or 408 um, or St. Vith. Well, what's really cool is that if they, let's say they accomplish their first objective and now they need to do a second objective, well, you roll a die again, but this is, if it was Malmody, then the sec second objective is going to be one of these three. If it was St. Vith, then their second objective is going to be three completely different ones. Actually, you can see the spa is shared amongst them. But you can see how the, the secondary objective changes based on what the first objective was. And then the third objective, there's a third one, too, uh, further down. So it gets even more crazy. Okay, so um, it's very, very cool. Um, so they got that on there. Um, they have your typical... There's this new thing called German detachment marker, so we're going to have to deal with that. Let me zoom you out a little bit. There's a German attack check, which uh, this is where I started to glaze over and started to skip, but we're going to definitely have to go through it. Um, it's the thing that decides whether or not they're going to attack you. So we're going to have to do a lot of that. Um, and then you can see there's a lot of cancel attack if. There's a lot of stuff there. Um, you know, cause surround is a new thing, but cause surround is so similar to what we're used to. There's no issue there. There's this new term called overwhelming attack. That's if they have odds greater than nine to one. Reserve supply is interesting. Um, the, uh, the difference is, is that you can't trace through allied units. <coughs> 
So supply normally can go through allied units, but reserve, <laughs> reserve supply can't. Sorry about that. Still dealing with my cold here. Um, and then you have strongest and surround and weakest, which a lot of those are similar. <coughs> Sorry. Okay. Now, here's the insanity I was telling you about. The German movement methods, there's 1 to 4, 5 through 9, 10 through 13, and then uh, there's 11, 12, yeah, then, 10. then there's restrictions, there's tiebreakers. There's core objectives, there's next to allied units, unsupplied units. We're gonna be using this one a lot. This backside is very similar. You can see that's our reserve deployment, which you're gonna find is almost identical to the when we were Germans. So it's gonna be very similar. Although we do have this new thing called a um, Yeah, the alternate reserve deployment. It lets you, because um, normally you, when you deploy, you have to be within three hexes of another unit within the same division. But remember that German game I just finished. I was able to kill off these guys, and I forced them to deploy down here. And that allowed me to just rampage through the middle. And there was nothing the Allies could do unless they had a massive deployment because they would have to go three by three by three, you know, to daisy chain out. Well, this is actually a rule that kills that. I can just say, you know what? The Germans are plowing through the middle. I want to put something in the middle, even though it's not near my other units. I'm allowed to do that. And there's a second alternative deployment method I can follow. It does force them to be quite a bit behind the German line. I mean, sorry, uh, they have to be five hexes away. Um, so that means they're very far away, but uh, you can at least put somebody there to try to stave them off. The tracing supply rules are almost identical, um, if not exactly identical. I'm just always nervous with saying exactly identical because some nerd is going to chime in on this video and go, well, they're not identical. <laughs> so um, I think they're identical. Let's just leave it at that. And then um, this is uh, unchanged as well. So surrounding units is always good. Okay, so uh, I know I'm delaying this setup here, but I just wanted to show you um, that even the, uh, the events and tactics change. So there's an allied solo, see on the top left corner. So our allied events, these are the German events that are available to them. And then these are the events available to us. And so we do have a different set of events and there are some differences compared to, you know, the German uh, play sheet and then we have this is how combat resolution works it's very identical to the German ones you can see here's hit steps and losses um, there's going to be some maybe some changes I'm not sure but uh, anyways um, uh, we're, we're gonna find out I didn't get into attack rules and all that stuff all that much um, my goal today is just to get this set up and introduce you to the Allied solo deck. Okay, so uh, let's just read what it says here. Use this organizer to support the unit placement procedure on the German adjustment display. Draw cards from the setup deck. Place them face up in the corresponding core space. Stop drawing when there's at least one card in each core space and three cards in at least one space. So that's all this is for, folks, is just to determine that all the cores are covered. Okay, so there's one. One. So far we're getting a nice even distribution. There's the second one. All right, we've gotten all of them out. We have two for here and two for there, and two for him. And let me just tell you, the more you draw for a particular core, the more damage they're gonna do. Um, and of course, now we're still getting an even distribution, which is hurting us here. Oh my gosh, we got two of everything. 
And there we go. We finished with three of this one. Only two cards in the entire deck not used. Okay, I don't think that was a good start. Um, I've never done this before, but let me just tell you, I don't think that was a good start. Okay, so what we then do is we're going to take these cards one core at a time, and we're going to go through this process here. So I'm going to just swap their position. I'm going to slide this up and put this down. And... Uh, Okay, so we have to put our units out. That's done. That's just saying put your stuff on the board. Shuffle the setup cards. So this is the same instructions we just followed, okay? So this part is done. And uh, actually, there's a German setup deck here. <laughs> uh, then we're going to process each pile of cards one core at a time. Let me make sure you can see this. Place the top cord in box one. Second card in box two, third card in box three. And then we have to follow the instructions of each of these boxes in order. And what I can tell you is, let's say we're gonna start with this core here, because we're gonna do one at a time. If I can, I'm having a hard time picking it up. So this core here, see this little picture? This picture is changing the way setup's gonna look. So we're gonna change the setup to match this picture, okay? And then what this saying is, is that if this was the second time this card came up and B was the other card, see this is A, so this is our second card, it's B. So it's saying that if this is the second card and A was the first card, then we're going to do these two things. You see that? So uh, it simulates a battle that occurred. So I'll show you in a second here. So we're going to take the top card and put it in process card one, and the second card goes in two. And we have nothing for three. So I do have to pick up the card so we can read the instructions. But it's going to basically say something similar to what I just explained. Uh, move any units from their starting hexes to the new hexes on the picture. The illustration may show a unit is reduced. If so, flip it. The illustration may also list an allied unit as eliminated. Place it in the eliminated units box. And then the Germans get a victory point for every two. Place any dispersed, blown bridge, or whatever markers per the illustration. Now, that's another important thing. In the German game, uh, anybody who had an underline got an improvement position. That's not the case here. Everybody starts with no improvement, and I only get improvements based on this. So, so it's saying that we want... So the German units look like they're exactly the way they're already set up. And the allied units look exactly... So really, this looks like there's no change. Do you see any change here? I see 1, 2, 3, and 1, 2, 3. I see no change at all. Which is fine, because that's what some of these cards do. They don't cause any actual change. And if you were playing as this particular core, they're not really going to do that much damage in the first place. So, okay, so, um, so that card's done, and it's A. We just have to note that it was A, all right? So then we go to B, and it says, if the core has a card in this box, complete the instructions for card one first. Done. Follow the adjustment instructions followed with a two and the letter that matches the letter on card one. So if card one was marked C, then use the note that says 2C. Okay. So this one says 2A, which um, we know we have to do. So I'm going to do reduce both of these units. That's the change. The picture, by the way, you ignore. This picture is only for um, if it was the first card. So now you're just doing whatever's written on that line. And just out of curiosity, we had only two cards left. And uh, here's what's interesting. That red core cannot be the third card. There's only three yellow or three blue. That's interesting. So not all these cores even have three cards. So the red card only has two setup cards. Okay, so uh, that's an interesting concept as well. All right, so it's saying that 326 is reduced. Let's zoom in here. 
326 is reduced and the US 925 is reduced. So 925 is reduced and 326 is this guy. He's reduced like so. All right, so once you're done, uh, you don't need these cards ever again. They're out of the, the rest of the game, but we just keep doing this for every core. So now we're gonna do the two yellow ones here. Top card goes on first, that one goes on second. So A is the first card, and now we gotta go look at a massive amount of units and see what does or does not get set up here. So I'm gonna let you study it for a little bit. So it says there's three, um, I'm looking where my thumb is, there's three here and then this town is empty. Right now the town has a unit, so I gotta figure out where that unit moved. And then just south of the town is one. And then I'm gonna have three up here, three here, and then two and two. And then you can see, look, there's even a unit that lost a step already. Um, so uh, I gotta pay, there's a couple units that lost steps. So I gotta pay attention to this. Quite a lot, actually. <laughs> All right, so um, I'm gonna maybe go left to right. We'll start with the ally here. And um, it looks like we got to start where the fuel marker is. So he looks untouched. He's a three of three, um, so no damage to him. Then we go down to, oh, what does the German victory point mean? That means the unit was eliminated, doesn't it? May also list an allied unit as eliminated. Oh my gosh. Okay, so um, it is the 14th cap. Oh, okay, this unit's eliminated. That makes sense. So we got to put that in the eliminated box. No problem. And uh, and then it put like a. It shows like a little victory point symbol. See that? That shows that it's eliminated. So then this next unit, I'm gonna put a um, improvement marker on. And uh, it doesn't look like he's been hit. He still has two pips on him, so I'll put an improvement marker on him. Then the next two are undamaged. That's these two. Okay, so now I'm going to go to this stack. They're on their exact same position, uh, undamaged. Four, four, and five. Four, four, and five. The next one is there's one that's damaged it's the 89th so this one's damaged and the other two are not okay and then we have the 3f and the so this one's damaged and this one's not, and they advance forward like that. And then the uh, the piper is here, along with this guy, like that. And then these two have not moved. Wow, that's quite a lot in one card. But uh, you know what? That's very similar to the outcome if we were to attack. And, uh, and yeah, they eliminated that recon unit, but it looks like the recon unit did two hits back. So um, I'm finding this to be quite fascinating. Um, uh, so anyways, that card is done and it was an A card. So now we got this card here. So we got even further adjustments and we know A was the one. So 5.3F and 8.3F are gonna move to 704. So let's figure out what those are. This is 5.3F and 8.3F are gonna to move to 704, which is here. Okay, remove the IP in 705. So our little IP marker was very short-lived. 
And that's all the instructions say. So they, they made a little bit more progress, but not a whole lot. Okay, well, that was fun. So let's do the next one. This is the orange core. And the first one is B. So let's figure out what's happening to these guys. And you can see uh, this unit is staying on the city. That unit's staying there. Then this is blank. And then this has the other unit who has actually been hit. He's reduced to four. And then this one has nothing done to him. So that was a bad start for them. You know, my recommendation is always look at their strength number. So like, see how that has a four there? Um, this one had a five. It's, it's easier to count than trying to look at the pips. Although the pips for this one aren't white, so that also stands out. But uh, anyways, so that was a B card. So now this card, 62 and 244 Panzer Battalion to 1205. Okay, so 62 and 244, that's these two units, are going to go to 1205. So they're both gonna be on that location. So that means they must have busted me back. 18 to 1204, that would be here. And then the US 423-106, 18th Corps to 1106, which is actually right here. It does not say that they're damaged. Um, it just says that he retreated. And here's what's interesting. Let's say this was the first card we drew. Look at the setup there. This guy gets an improvement marker and that one's completely dispersed and knocked back. It's pretty interesting how if they come out differently, it's a whole different set up and each of these cores have their own thing. It's uh, that's also interesting. Okay. I have to stop real quick. My dog is needing my attention and I am sorry. It's, she's really doing something I've never seen before. And uh, she has a look of guilt on her face. So I gotta go figure out what she got herself into. I will be right back. Thank you.